Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Mark, this is Spagabber Backpacking, and today is episode two of our hammock how-to series. Here are a couple of hammocks. So this one, this episode is all about hammocks. And so I mentioned in the first episode that there are two primary types of hammocks, that being bridge hammocks and gathered end hammocks. Here I've got two examples, pretty simple examples of each one. We'll go ahead and take a look at these and then we'll get into many of the differences and many of the variables that you can get into. I primarily have gathered and, and hammocks, so that's mostly what we're going to talk about. Now, I did say that there are two types of hammocks out there that people usually decide from, gathered end and bridge. However, that's not to say there aren't other types out there and we will talk about those as well. So let's get started. So a buddy, a subscriber, somebody that follows me on Facebook, Chris Chang. He hooked me up with this one, lent it to me so that I could do this video and show you guys a little bit about this one. I also did a small little review show and tell of one that Junebug Dawn did in the Palmetto State Hang, uh, the, the one a few months back. But So I've got this one here, we're going to talk about this one. So this one is a Jaxar Better, the Bear Mountain bridge hammock and it is a nice hammock. Uh, there's a lot of differences. When you go to a bridge hammock, there are some that have longer spreader bars on head end and smaller on foot end. This one happens to be the same on both sides. So either end could become your head end or foot end depending on how you want to set it up. Inside of these, they have pockets that you can store things. The spreader bar is what keeps it apart. Now, a lot of people say that because of that spreader bar and because of this system, you put it a little bit tighter to the trees. And you can see I'm a little, little steeper than a 30 degree angle, probably, uh, or more shallow, probably 20 degrees, 15 degrees is more like it. And that's to get a good pull on this hammock. Now, one of the things I really will say I like about this hammock is it's got this reinforced edge that has the, the zipper on it because this one has an integrated bug net. But when you use this one, in camp to sit, this one really becomes like a chair. Because of the way that you sit down in it, the back part of it really becomes like a chair. And so you've got a great chair. The, the gathered end hammocks, I like sitting in them like this, but I'm laid a little bit more back and lounging. Whereas this one, it's more of a chair and it would feel a little bit more natural almost to reach down and do you know some cooking or gathering stuff or doing whatever in front of you, you know, whatever work you're, you're having to do while you're at camp. I think it feels a little bit more natural with this one. Just the sitting position is really, really nice. I like that. One of the reasons that people decide to go with a bridge hammock over a gathered end hammock is the ability to lay flatter. So let me show you guys how flat this one lays. So from there, you should be able to see how much of a bow there is underneath this. So getting into it, it's not too bad. I want to get my head pretty much down towards the, uh, the head end. And now I'm laying, and really, if I was to tighten this up a little bit, I would be even a little bit more flat. But I feel pretty good. And one of the things people really like about these hammocks is the ability to move around positions a little bit. So let's take a look. So the first thing you're going to notice if you get yourself into a bridge hammock is that they can feel quite tippy. And that's because of the Y, the way that it, it goes out from a point. The bigger the spreader bar is, the wider, the less tippy it, it seems to feel based on the few that I've, I've dealt with. But while it feels a little bit tippy, it really isn't that tippy. So getting in, you want to make sure you aren't grabbing hold of either of the spreader bars as you're getting yourself in or out. So I like to sit in it just like I would and then just kind of lay myself back. So once I'm in it, I can kind of situate myself. Because of the cat cut, you know, it's cut a little bit differential. It's more narrow in the middle. So it, it feels snug there. Now, if you lay with your, your arms down at your side, kind of mummy style, you do get a bit of shoulder squeeze. Now, that's where the ones that have the wider spreader bar at the head end come in really handy and spread it out so that you don't feel that. Now, you can get away from that by putting your arms above your head. Now, I feel virtually no shoulder squeeze. I can feel that it comes up a little bit, but it's not 
It's not bad whatsoever. I'm actually pretty comfortable like this and I feel like I'm laying really flat. One of the things that people do say is that a bridge hammock like this can give them a better side sleep position. So you can lay, you know, if you're one of those people that lays with your arm above your head, you know, this is a very natural feeling position here. And because you're on your side, you kind of have the side of this thing supporting your back, your knees up against this side. I know that some people don't like that, but for me, it feels pretty good. And the one thing that this has above a gathered end hammock, I think, is the ability to lay on your stomach. So this is something you really can't do too much of in a gathered end hammock. And I think that this is an advantage here for those that can only sleep on their stomachs. I actually feel really comfortable like this. You know, your feet don't have to be quite as together as they are in a gathered end hammock. And so the positions, you kind of have more positions to play with while you're out here in a bridge hammock. So now, let's take a look at it with the, uh, with the bug net on. So one of the things that Chris did tell me about when I asked to borrow this was if I was gonna use the bug net to have it zipped past the corners so that when I got in it was easier to get a hold of and pull, them, pull the zippers in. And also, sometimes when you're laying in it, it puts a lot of tension on those corners and getting around them can be tough. So I've got it kind of prepped so that I'm getting in it, there's a bunch of bugs around, there's mosquitoes all over this area. So I just lift it up over my head, start getting in, I'll reach up to the foot end and pull that one about midway down, get my other foot in, I can reach up overhead, pull that down, get the zippers, I can put the zippers wherever it's convenient for me. So what's nice is because of this cat cut and because of the tension, it keeps this up off of my head. And I've heard people complain that in bridge hammocks, they can't really see out as much. But I'm gonna be honest, I can see out both sides of this. I've got a great view above me. I think I can see out, if I'm, if I'm looking at both sides, I can see more laying in this one than I can in a gathered end. Because usually I'm on a diagonal and one side comes up higher than the other on the gathered end hammock. Now you'll notice that this one does not need a ridge line. While some gathered end hammocks do have ridge lines for their bug nets. This one doesn't need one. And really when this thing's tensioned all the way, it's not quite as tensioned as it could be right now. I'd be a flatter lay and this would be pulled a little bit tighter like this and really give me a lot of room inside of here. So that is the bridge hammock. A lot of people prefer them, but I've got to say there are some disadvantages to them. Number one being the weight and the size that they pack down to. Because of the spreader bars and the more webbing and attachment points that have to be on them, they are about a pound, if not more, heavier than a similar gathered end hammock. So let's walk away from this one and come over here and check out the features and design of a gathered end hammock. We looked at the bridge hammock. Now we're gonna look at the gathered end hammock. This is a gathered end hammock. It's a simple design. This is about as simple a gathered end hammock as you can have. It is a single layer, 1.0 Hyper D nylon. It is 11 foot long and just about 58 inches wide. Now you can get them up to about 65 inches wide if you go with something like Aerobic XL as the fabric. So the different fabrics have different feels. So the Hyper D, especially in the 1.0, has a very silky, silky feel. The Aerobics are a little bit more substantial. You get into something like the Hexons from Dutch and they're a little bit cottony almost. Uh, so the different, different fabric, fabrics have different feels and then they come in different weights. Now the weights, now you can get them either to fit your firmness. If you like a firm mattress, you probably like a heavier fabric because it's gonna give more uh, of a firm lay and not not stretch as much underneath you. Also, if you weigh more, you want to go with a heavier fabric. So this one happens to be a 1.0, as light as you can possibly get. It has a continuous ridge line. Now you can get these ridge lines either fixed or adjustable. The ridge line length usually falls somewhere between 80 and 85 percent, with 83 usually being the magic number. So if you take a look, 83 ends up being 10 inches per foot. 
So an 11 foot hammock, 83, ends up being about 110 inches. Mine happens to be about 109 inches, a little bit shorter than the, the standard 83%. And that's just to give the sag that I like. So every time I set this up, if I get this where it's tight, it's holding the hammock to have this sag that you see right here. And I found this sag to be what fits me best and what works. Now, if you're not sure what it is that, that will work for you, go with the 83%, go with whatever standard on it. If you want, you could go with an adjustable ridge line. So on an adjustable ridge line, it may have a piece of hardware on there, or it may just be tied where you can slip knot a prusik or something uh, to adjust it. And then you can play with the different lengths, set it up, get in it, and feel what works best for you. So, in these hammocks, these are the gathered end hammocks, they have a different way of laying in them than the bridge hammock. So, let's take a look at how you lay in a gathered end hammock. So, if you're getting into your gathered end hammock, you want to sit kind of towards the center. And then, one of the great things is, you can just kind of lounge in this while you're at camp. You just kind of lay back, put your hands behind your head, and now you've got a great place to just kind of sit and relax. And if you want, you can lounge, lay down. You can kind of sit in this lots of different ways to, uh, to really get comfortable and suit your needs. So let's take a look at how you lay in this. So you sit down like I am here, then you lay diagonally in it. So your head goes to one side, your feet go to the other side, and now you're laying diagonally in it. And that creates the flattest lay. Now, if you were to lay the way that you see a lot of people lay in hammocks, like this, you've got a lot of loose fabric out here. It puts a lot of tension, a lot of stress right on the center of the fabric. It doesn't spread your weight across it. So really you could intensify the effect of your weight in the hammock by laying this way. And it puts you in this pike position where you're really curled up. You can't really lay flat, you can't really get comfortable. So if you just simply move to the side, throw your head back, you know, now you can find that sweet spot, figure out where your, your feet need to be so that you don't have a calf ridge. Now a calf ridge is something you'll hear people talk about, and that's where some of this gathered fabric will stick up higher. So if my foot was over here and there's this bulge right here, it could be behind my calf and putting pressure there. So one way to resolve that is just to take your foot, slide it across the hammock, try and smooth it out, and push any remaining fabric outside of your foot, and that gets rid of it and you get a nice comfortable lay. Now for your ridge line, you want to reach up and it shouldn't be completely tight where you can't bend this at all. Uh, you don't want to go all the way to 90 though. A little bit of bend is about all you want for it to be perfect. And then you can set it up the same way every time because of that. So I talked about there being the two main types that people buy. The bridge hammock, which I showed, the gathered end hammock, but there really are a couple of others out there. There are hybrid hammocks, which fall into the category uh, the brands of Clark Jungle Hammocks or DD Jungle Hammocks. And what they are is kind of a, a mix between a, a gathered end and a bridge with an integrated bug net. And usually they have something like uh, some dome type uh, poles. So some poles that you would put in that dome over with an integrated bug net. And so it kind of becomes like almost a hybrid between not only just a bridge hammock and a gathered end hammock, but also really with a tent, because some of them actually have uh, over covers and even tarps that will clip into the system and become one integrated full system. Now, the disadvantage to those are they are really heavy, uh, a lot heavier than a bridge hammock, way heavier than a gathered end hammock. So you've got to weigh that and figure out what you're doing with it. If you're doing car camping or just you know, camping behind your house or just hanging out, Boy Scout type stuff, that may be a good option for you. If you're doing backpacking or anything where you're gonna be carrying it with you for any extended periods of time, I suggest staying away from those. Some people still love taking them out there. All great, as long as you're getting out and having fun, I don't care what kind of hammock you're using. Uh, so there's those. There's also 90 degree hammocks. So the, the big brand that comes up is AMOK. A-M-O-K, 
and they're set up kind of like a gathered end hammock, but then it has a structure in the center where you actually would lay, let me get in this one. You'd actually lay like this. So the theory is because everything is going up to the tree, it stays pretty much 30 degrees all the way down to your body. You have a sleeping pad that goes into some sort of contraption here, and then you lay this way. You do get a lot of swing, but there's no real side to side, and some people really like it. It requires a larger tarp. When we get into talking about tarps, an AMOC or any 90 degree hammock is going to require a much larger tarp to cover that distance that you're laying. So, I will say this. Some people like them. I personally do not know anyone who has purchased an AMOC hammock and still owns it, okay? So let's take a look at some of the options you can get with a gathered end hammock. Since that's primarily what I use, that's what we're mostly gonna talk about. I will say that bridge hammocks are great and the two that I've laid in, this one and June Bugs, have both been really comfortable. And if I was doing more car camping or something where I wasn't hiking a long distance, I would definitely consider one. Because I like to go ultralight and do a lot of backpacking and a lot of hiking, I'm sticking with the gathered in. So let's look at options. So this happens to be one of the more popular types of hammocks out there. So this one, while the, the brand is, is irrelevant, it is one of the made in China parachute nylon hammocks that are so prevalent out there. You go to Amazon and there's probably 10 different companies selling these right now. They range anywhere between nine feet long and 11 and a half feet long. Varies greatly on you know, where you're getting it from, what the brand name is. So the problem with these is that they don't come with a, a ridge line. So right now I can tell you, this is set up way too tight across. It's putting a lot of stress on this, this hammock. But if you're new to hammocks, how do you know? Well, the guideline is you set up your suspension about 30 degrees. How do you know if it's about 30 degrees? Well, a good rule of thumb is if you make a, a little pistol with your hand, that's about a 30 degree angle between your, your thumb and your middle or your pointer finger. Uh, so you can kind of put that up against your, your suspension and see, but we'll talk more about that in the suspension video. Today, I just want to talk about this hammock. So this is about as simple as you can get, period, about as cheap as you can get. They usually come with suspension, ready to go out the door. They range between $18.99 and $30. Bucks. This is really very similar to the design of an Eno type hammock. So Eno, Grand Trunk, Ciroc, Bare Butt. There are, there's just a huge list of companies out there that make very similar hammocks to this. The continuous loops that they use at the end are heavy rope. Um, it's just not, for me, it's not a well put together hammock. It's, it's not what I wanna be in. They have seams that run down them about a third of the way in on each side. They've got triple stitch seams and that's so that they can get the width a little bit wider than the fabric that they actually have. What that does is I talked about the calf ridge. Well, that creates its own little calf ridge and on your back. I've got, I've got this thing running across my back right now, and that is just not comfortable at all. It's like there's give on the outside of it, there's give on the inside of it, but where it is sewn, it's just creating this, this ridge that's inflexible and really digs into my back. Digs under your calves as well. So you've really gotta play with it to even find a comfortable position to lay in it. Now, does that mean there's no, no real use for these? No, these are great for taking out to the beach, out to you know just lounge in if you're out on vacation and you just want something to lounge in just kind of relax maybe go out set it up read a book in these things are great they're cheap they're economical they're easy to get into but a lot of people get into them get into this kind and they say ah, i just don't really like hammocks it isn't that you don't like hammocks it's that you haven't tried a good hammock this hammock is not what I would ever consider taking out and camping in. You're just not gonna get comfortable. It's not the right size, it's not the right dimensions, it's not set up correctly, it has no ridge line. Sure, you can add a ridge line to these, but is it worth it? 
let's take a look at one step above this. So this hammock is just a little bit better than the last one. Now this one happens to be the first hammock I ever purchased. I'm probably never gonna get rid of it. The kids use it, we love it. It is only 10 feet long, so it's only a foot longer than the Ciroc that I just showed you. But that foot, given that it doesn't have seams in it, and the fabric, and the way it's put together, and the fact that I've added a ridge line to it makes it exactly what I need and what I, what I want. This one happens to be a double layer. Now what does that mean? It means that there are two layers underneath you. So it's a 1.0 fabric, but there's actually two layers of 1.0 fabric, and then there's an opening. If you see right here, you can see this opening. What that allows is for you to put insulation or a sleeping pad or something in between the two layers, and that keeps it set where you want it. So really, it works great if you're getting into hammocking and you already have camping gear and you already have a sleeping pad. Open this up, slide a sleeping pad in, which is exactly how I got started. I used a sleeping pad for quite a while before I got my first underquilt because it's expensive. This is not a hobby that is inexpensive. Everything about it can be expensive depending on how you go. So use what you've got or get a specific one, slide it in there, position it, and then it's just like the one that I just showed you. So you just sit in it and then lay, lay back to uh, get your diagonal hang. So this one has a ridge line on it. This ridge line did not come with it. It's not a fixed ridge line and I have hardware on the end of it. So this one has a little tiny Dutch hook down at the end so I can disconnect it if I want. So pretty easy. I say that and then there we go. So it's disconnected. I could take it off. I could adjust it. But right now I've got it tied for exactly the, the hang that I want. The ridge line is good for several things. So we talked about it a little bit in episode one, but you can hang organizers from it. You can hang your headlamp, a knife, whatever from it. It also serves as a structural piece for when you have a bug net. So this one does not have any integrated bug net. It's just a netless hammock. So if you're online looking and you see the term netless hammock, that's what this is. This is a netless hammock. And you can add like a Franke style bottom opening bug net to this. Get it for the right length of your hammock, put it on, and then you come up in from inside. And when you lay back, this ridge line keeps it up off of you. So again, you lay in this just the way Ah, yeah, just the way that you do in all the other gathered in hammocks on a diagonal. So some people lay with their head to the left, some people lay with their head to the right. I would say the majority lay head left, foot right. I'm of the minority. I go head right, foot left. But that's okay. And if you get into something like a netless hammock, you don't have to know how you lay prior to getting into it. These are, these are completely symmetrical every way. There's not really a head or a foot end. You can create one. So I put a little tiny piece of red uh, lashing on the end of this one to tell me which side is my head side so that I always set it up the, right, the same way. So I elevate the foot end just slightly like you see here and set it up that way. But it does not matter which end really is my head or foot end because it's a completely symmetrical design. Now there are some out there that are cut so that you lay with your head on one side and only one side. This one, I could lay head right, I could lay head left, I could lay on my side, I could flip flop in the night, doesn't matter. I may have to adjust an underquilt if I'm using an underquilt. I may have to move my pad around if I'm using a pad, but it doesn't matter. It's a symmetrical design. I can lay any way I want in it. So let's take a look at the next step. So this one is only slightly different than the original netless hammock that I showed you. This one's a little bit heavier duty fabric. This one's a 1.6 Hyper D in the Moroccan blue, which I love. But it still has the continuous ridge line. Uh, I don't have it quite pulled out enough because you can see how floppy this is. So this gives me a good indication of I need to hang this a little bit further apart. So I would adjust one of the ends to pull that till it's, it's tight. But what I want to show you on this one is this one has pullouts that gives it a directional look. So while this one is not necessarily directional, it is still a complete symmetrical uh, design. It has pullouts 
that give it a direction. Now, it also has extra pullouts, one over here and one over there, so you could switch these. Right now, it's set up the way that I lay, head right, foot left, but you can always swap it, change the pullouts, and make it the other way. Now, what does having the pullouts do for you? Well, it creates a little bit of a wider base, so when you have a bug net around you, it actually spreads it out a little bit more and keeps it off of you a little bit. The other thing that it does is it keeps your stuff inside. A lot of times when you get in and out of your hammock, your top quilt will like to fall out. Whatever you have in there with you will like to fall out. But having it this way, it keeps it open. So getting in it is easier because all you have to do now is just sit down. You haven't, don't have to worry about spreading anything out behind you because it's already spread out. Once you're in, it kind of gives you a foot box area. So the term foot box, you'll hear, uh, especially when people talk about like a war bonnet blackbird has a foot box. It's actually a sewn piece that's a little bit bigger where your feet go to keep, to keep it diagonal and to really let you know when you're in the spot, the sweet spot. So this one kind of does that artificially, gives you a nice little spot you can get into and get comfortable. Also, when you go to get out, because these are pulled, it keeps it up and keeps your stuff more inside. Still, you can pull it out as you're getting out if you're not careful, but this helps keep it in there and helps you get organized a little bit better. So there's one step further. Let's take a look a little bigger. So this one is the Dutchware Gear Half Wit. And the reason it's called the Half Wit is because it goes halfway with a bug net. So now we're starting to get into bug net. So this one has a bug net on it. It also has pullouts. So you can pull this out and lash it out. Because I like to do a lot of backpacking, go ultralight, I don't carry anything extra to pull this one out. What pulling it out does, like I mentioned with the other one, is it widens it out and it keeps this up off of you, keeps the bug net up off of you a little bit better than without them. I will sacrifice that because it's, it's difficult to get everything. For me, when you get it staked out and you're trying to get in and out from under a tarp and you've got the tarp staked out, it's just it's a lot of lines to be worried about getting over. Uh, and so I really don't take any of the uh, any of the lines to pull it out with me when I go out backpacking. So the way this one works is it actually can be pulled back it's got a little piece here that you can attach to the ridge line. And now you can kind of get down in here and it keeps it up off of you. When you're ready to deploy it, you take that away, pull it down, and then it falls down over you. Now you'll have a top quilt on. And so this will nest right up against your top quilt. And really you can see I'm laying in here. It's not up against my face very much. Um, you know, when I'm really in there, it's fine. Uh, so this is a great option for someone that's looking to go really lightweight and still have bug protection. As long as you are using a top quilt and not going with, with naked legs, uh, this is gonna work really well for you. Now, this one has another design feature that we haven't talked about yet, and that is this area right here. So this little area right here has elastic in there and this is called a knotty mod and what this does is it can artificially create that foot box so you can see here it creates a little gather of fabric so when I lay with my feet over here I'm not worried about my top quilt coming up over the top because it has created this little fold and so my feet fit in and it holds everything in uh, it also on the head side if you keep it a little bit tight will keep the fabric from flopping over onto your face which is really nice Nice feature, something I really enjoy. So now that we've seen a partial bug net, let's take a look at one that is fully integrated. So if you are a person that really does not like bugs and wants to have a nice enclosure that's gonna keep you free of bugs, that half bug net that I showed on the half whip probably isn't going to be sufficient to keep you comfortable throughout the night. And it's all about being comfortable and knowing that you are secure. Uh, if you don't have a lot of thoughts on your mind, you're gonna sleep better, it's gonna be more enjoyable experience. So this is the next step in that, and this is a fully integrated bug net. So it has zippers on either side that you can open up to get into. 
This one actually, uh, depending on where you live, you can actually take this completely off. This is the Dutchwear Gear Chameleon. Uh, it does have pull-out points. Like I mentioned, when I'm out backpacking, I usually don't take those with me, but they do provide some usefulness in keeping the bug net up off of you when it's pulled out. I'm okay sacrificing that a little bit. So this thing can completely zip off. It also can come with top covers. So a top cover, if you're wondering what that is, would be the same as this bug net, but it would have a piece of some sort of fabric, a, an argon or something that would be in place of this bug net with then over your head a vented area so that there's some ventilation in there, but it covers it and that traps in some warmth and really really does help to supplement your, your top quilt uh, and keep you a little bit warmer on those colder nights. So the way these work is you can unzip them as much as you want to, get into it just like you would any other gathered end hammock. And then once you get in, you can simply pull it closed around you, zip it up, get to your, your position. And if you don't like where those are, pull them up so that they're a little bit closer to you. Uh, but you can really get yourself comfortable and know that you're free of any bugs. I mean, you got this nice, complete area in here. Uh, you're not worried about some little piece and is my top quilt covering is there a gap between the the half bug net and my body where some mosquitoes are going to get me this one fully encloses you and keeps you bug free uh, if you want you can buy an added top cover now the one cool thing about this chameleon is that it's directional but the directional cut is in the cover and what makes it even cooler is that this cover is reversible. So right now it's set up for head right, foot left. If I was to unzip it completely off and flip it over, it then would become head right or head left, foot right. Um, so it's really cool that you can do that. And it's the same with the top cover. And you can buy those accessories afterwards. You can buy lots of accessories for these things. There are, you know, ridgeline organizers. There are pockets that connect in here. There are peak bags, uh, you name it, you can come up with it, water bottle holders. But really, when you get to this level, there's only, there's only a handful of makers out there that are making fully integrated, really purposeful hammocks. You've got Dream Hammock, you've got Dutchware gear, and then you've got some of the smaller cottage vendors out there that are doing it. Um, you know, Warbonnet has their, their Blackbird and Blackbird XLC. There are, you know, there are actually several others out there that I'm sure I'm forgetting. But it's not a huge market. It's not, you're not going to go to a Dick's Sporting Goods and go buy this. This is something you're going to have to find online. A great resource is hammockforums.net. There, uh, the different Different groups on Facebook are all great places to go and get information. You know, message me. Mess throw some comments down below. People will communicate and we'll get a good flow of communication going and we'll get you the information that you need. But go out and look. Don't just settle for what's out there when you go to Dick's or you go to some other sporting goods store. Look for the good stuff. So guys, it's important that you look around Seek out the details that you want in a hammock. Don't go cheap. Go for what you want because if you go cheap, you get cheap. And you'll end up buying over and over and over again until you get what you want. Seek out, if you can't decide, seek out a hang. So a lot of places, South Carolina has the Palmetto State Hangers. North Carolina has the Tar Heel State Hangers. There are hanging groups all over the country. If you go to hammockforums.net, there is a group hang or a trip area. Go in there and see if you can find a group hang somewhere near you in the near future. Go to the hang, talk with people, get their opinions, see if they'll let you lay in their hammock and try things out. You know, if you could wait and go down to HammockCon in Florida in January, 
great thing about that is a lot of the vendors have their stuff, have their wares out for people to take a look at, lay in, feel, and, and you'll get a good idea of what works for you and what doesn't. Getting to go to a hang and talking with people that are using the products, getting to possibly lay in their stuff will give you a really, really good idea of what works for you and what doesn't. And you may even figure out which direction you lay, what works best for you, what feels most comfortable. For me, this is the direction I lay. Uh, I've tried the other way and I just cannot get comfortable even though that's the way most people lay. This just works best for me. So find what works best for you and do it. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me to just throw comments out there. Someone is going to answer you. Someone's going to hook you up with the information you need. This is a tight-knit community and we like to help each other. I hope that this series is helping you to decide and to come up with what it is that you want to get into. Thanks guys, I'll see you down the trail.